Plavicto is a treatment that is FDA approved for prostate cancer that has metastasized. And today we're talking to Dr. Mark Schultz, who's a 30 year medical oncologist. And he's gonna be answering questions that were left on our previous videos regarding Pluvicto. Things like, can you take more than six cycles? Do you need to have failed chemo? And so much more. So I hope you find this video helpful. Today, as we're answering questions on Pluvicto, can you give a short summary of what Pluvicto is and the staging of where it's used? Pluvicto is a, is a radioactive substance that has been linked to a special molecule that clips onto the surface of cancer cells. So when you inject this combination of the radioactive substance with this molecule, it swims around in the bloodstream and finds the cancer and delivers high-dose radiation right to the tumor. This treatment um, is used primarily in uh, men that have had previous chemotherapy, which means that regular hormone treatments are no longer working, the PSA levels are rising, and there has been some exposure in these individuals to chemotherapy in the past, and it's only under all those circumstances that insurance companies will cover the administration of Pluvicto in prostate cancer patients. So our first question regarding Pluvicto is why can't it be continued after six cycles? Well, technically it can be continued. Pluvicto is quite expensive, and the vast majority of people wouldn't be able to afford continuing the treatment if they had to write a check each time. Why did it turn out to be a six cycle treatment? It turns out that way uh, with a number of more recently FDA approved drugs because when companies do their initial research, they pick a certain number of uh, cycles as the amount of cycles to be tested in the research. And then when the research gets published, the FDA reviews this and approves treatment using that particular recipe. And insurance companies, which pay for this, will only cover the cost if you follow the recipe. So from our presentations with Dr. Eugene Kwan, he mentioned that he found that a lot of patients misunderstood that, you know, the use of chemo doesn't mean you have to fail chemo. Is that accurate that you can just go on a couple cycles and start Pluvicto earlier? Or is there a certain duration of chemo that needs to happen before Pluvicto is administered? No, that's definitely accurate. Use of chemotherapy when people implement it may prove to be very effective and in some cases relatively non-toxic and those individuals might want to stay on the treatment. Uh, and people who are uh, experiencing side effects uh, that are not at all uncommon with chemotherapy, or if their PSA declines are not very compelling, um, I would switch over to Pluvicto. You can always come back to the chemotherapy later. You have that liberty to use uh, chemotherapy pretty much without restriction, as long as you have a diagnosis of prostate cancer. Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you that this September we're having an in-person prostate cancer patients and caregivers conference. It's a great way to get your questions answered by our speakers and to join the prostate cancer community and build some new relationships. You can learn more at PCRI.org. Now, don't forget to click that subscribe button because it really helps us when you do and YouTube will push our videos out to other people who need their questions answered about prostate cancer. And if you would like to donate and join our cause, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my conversation with Dr. Scholes on Pluvicto. A daughter left a comment about her dad and he was on oral hormone medications and he was now going on Pluvicto, but the doctor stopped the oral medications and she's wondering, should he stay on them and just in case they have some anti-cancer effect? It's a good question. The, in general, because the oral chemotherapies, these are generally the PARP inhibitors that we're talking about in the prostate cancer realm, because they can lower blood counts, white counts, platelet counts, cause some degree of anemia. Typically, we would stop them because Pluvicto also, being radiation, can lower white counts, platelet counts, and cause mild anemia as well. So you don't want to have a double whammy. You could argue that they're stopping the PARP inhibitor because uh, it's not causing PSA reductions and it's not getting the kind of anti-cancer results they were hoping for. So to stay on a potentially toxic medicine that's not gaining ground uh, while implementing a brand new medicine, which you have high hopes will cause a lot of cancer regression, you don't want to create additional toxicity that would impede the ability to optimally use the new Plavicto treatment. The same question also comes up in people who are on second generation hormone medicines like Zytiga, uh, Nubeca, Erlita, and Extandi. Those medicines, there isn't cross-reactivity against the bone marrow. While it's 
often been the policy of many physicians to stop those second generation hormone treatments when they're starting a new treatment. Maybe it's chemotherapy, maybe it's Pluvicto. My general policy is not to stop them. And people would ask why. If the PSA is going up, perhaps they're doing no good. The reality is is that prostate cancer tends to be a mosaic, and it's quite possible that there are certain uh, components of the cancer in these different patients' bodies that are being suppressed. It's just that some of the cells aren't being suppressed. And to discontinue these second-generation hormone therapies, which usually are not incurring much of any side effects, doesn't make much sense if we release those other cancers that are being suppressed. Uh, We want to keep the cancer under control as much as possible. Uh, This same policy has been in place with first-generation hormone therapies for many, many years with Lupron. People don't stop using Lupron when the PSA begins rising. People continue the Lupron or whatever first-generation Orgovix or whatever hormone treatment uh, on a continual basis through the um, Pluvicto or through the Taxotere. Why would we stop a second-generation hormone therapy if we consider the same underlying rationale. Is there a way for doctors to either know ahead of time whether Pluvicto is going to work or determine if it's going to work, or is it kind of just a, you have to go on it and see if you're the patient, the response to it? I think in general, the latter is true. The times where we're concerned about Pluvicto being an inappropriate selection is in men who have heavily suppressed bone marrow. Sometimes they've had other radiation in the past, or they've been on chemotherapy, or perhaps the prostate cancer is getting out of hand and they're, they're requiring transfusions to keep their red cell counts uh, in an adequate range. We worry about the safety of the medicine or if platelet counts are quite low, Plavicto might not be a, a feasible proposition. But in terms of our ability to predict whose cancer is going to shrink away, we don't have any good markers or indicators. Certainly people who are starting in more advanced stages are somewhat less likely to get great responses, but they can get great responses. And uh, since the side effects of Pluvicto tend to be pretty modest, it's always a great idea to give it a try and see. uh, We expect PSAs to start uh, dropping within one or two cycles of the um, initiation of treatment. A lot of oncology is that way, where we're not entirely sure in any one individual whether we're going to see results. But statistically, because of experience, we know that the majority of men will get some benefit and some men will get dramatic benefit. So do you see a decline in PSA with Pluvicto, and how long does it take before you would see that decline? Yeah, I would say that we expect to see a decline in PSA after two infusions of Pluvicto. And if we're not seeing at least some leveling off of the PSA, if you think of the PSA as rising on a slope, and if you're looking at data points on a graph, um, typically people have rising PSAs when they start Pluvicto. And we would hope, at the very least, that you'd see some stabilization, even a decline in PSA after two injections. How long does Pluvicto work? So how long can we see in these clinical trials that it added you know, months or years to your life? Well, the, the range is from people who certainly appear to get no benefit at all initially to people who go into remissions, where I've seen after the sixth injection, their PSA is still declining two years later. We haven't had Plavicto that long, so I don't have super long follow-up. You can get remissions, even uh, complete remissions, where PSA goes down to undetectable levels with Plavicto. I wish that was a common occurrence. It's not, but it certainly does happen. So is it true that Pluvicto works really well in one third of patients, kind of well in the next third and not at all in others? That's a reasonable generalization. So indicating that around two thirds of patients that are lining up to get Plavicto. These are people who, have many of them have had a lot of chemotherapy, have very high PSAs and very extensive disease throughout their bones and often are not responding to any other treatment. The idea that more than half of the people that uh, take this medicine clearly benefit to some degree is a rather remarkable accomplishment. Why isn't Pluvicto given as an adjuvant prostate cancer treatment to prevent recurrence or prevent future metastatic you know, activity? It may be at some time in the future. Uh, clinical trials have been completed in men that have oligometastatic disease and spot radiation or beam radiation to men that only have a few metastatic sites is becoming very popular and it's quite effective now that we have PSMA PET scans that seem to localize the lion's share if not all the disease. So the clinical trial that was completed, uh, they gave spot radiation to two or three sites. For men to be eligible, they couldn't have more than four or five sites. In addition, they were given two injections of Pluvicto uh, as an ancillary or adjuvant anti-cancer maneuver. The results of that study are still pending. It has not enough time has transpired to see if the men that got spot radiation alone 
versus the men who got spot radiation plus two injections of Plavicto, uh, whether there'll be a difference in control rates and survival rates. Does getting spot radiation to a couple metastatic lesions on the bones or the lymph nodes in any way make you ineligible for getting Pluvicto? No, I think the only things that make people ineligible for Pluvicto are they must have a rising PSA with a low testosterone, they must have metastatic disease, and they need to have had some exposure to chemotherapy, even just a single injection of chemotherapy, to be eligible to get insurance coverage. Does the radiation from Pluvicto affect other people? And should they stay away from their loved ones? Or I know in some, you know, you read some of these package inserts, it says don't have, you know, someone sit on your lap. There's kind of these different things that they talk about. But is that something that happens with Pluvicto? I'm not actually familiar with all the specifics of how far away and how long. And there's some talk about flushing toilets twice. And, and my general sense is that the uh, concerns related to this are pretty minimal. But uh, there's a whole structure to the way this is administered. We don't administer Plavicto in our office. Uh, patients are referred to specialized nuclear medicine facilities to receive the medicine, and, uh, and I'm sure they get a list of, of how they have to be careful. I've never heard anyone uh, complaining that the requirements are onerous. This person was you know, doing some research on actinium versus Pluvicto, and they're wondering which one is more effective for an anti-cancer effect. Well, actinium is a more potent form of radiation than Pluvicto is, and the research so far is somewhat limited. Actinium apparently is somewhat difficult to manufacture and they don't have it in lar uh, large volume yet. The limited exposure I've seen has uh, indicated the actinium is certainly more potent in terms of its anti-cancer effects and it's definitely more potent in terms of its side effects and the radiation effect on the bone marrow. Bone marrow is very sensitive to radiation and chemotherapy and people can have declines in white count, platelet count, red count with these medicines. Plavicto has been fairly friendly in that regard. Actinium, in my experience, has been very heavy-handed. We've had some patients with permanent suppression of bone marrow to a serious degree where they even required transfusions to uh, compensate for the lack of bone marrow production of red cells. How that's going to play out, we don't know. Actinium is still early in the learning curve. The anti-cancer effects from that and uh, actinium has also been rather impressive uh, in terms of patients who have failed Plavicto and don't have any other options and have substantial cancer regression uh, after their actinium treatments. Before we were able to get access to Plavicto here in the U.S., there were many patients who were traveling internationally to get it, and maybe they were hearing about it from research papers and their oncologists, and it seemed to be a lot cheaper in those areas. Is there ever an option where if a patient wanted to go beyond the six cycles that they were approved for here in the U.S. that they can go internationally and possibly get further treatment? Yes, absolutely. There's centers in, that we're aware of in Germany, Australia, Turkey that are providing this service knowingly to uh, American patients because the prices uh, overseas are dramatically less than what they are here in the United States. Obviously there's additional travel issues and then there's uncertainty regarding the medical system outside the USA, but this is a very user-friendly treatment. Get a 30-second injection in your bloodstream every six weeks. The distances are uh, an issue, but uh, for people who had had a great response to Plavicto in the past, and now the disease is going up, and they have enough bone marrow reserve to be able to tolerate further Plavicto. I think it would be a very logical option if they have the financial resources. One of the things that I've talked to caregivers about is they're wondering, you know, how soon can I get a PSMA scan to see if the Plavicto is being effective, or is PSA the only thing that I'm really looking for? Because I think, you know, it's exciting if you can think about the fact that this treatment could possibly take away these metastatic lesions, and they want to see it on that scan. Well, PSMA has become an important ancillary thing to PSA because there are cases where PSA can go to zero, and we still see persistent uh, disease activity, and you want to know about that if that's the case. I think another issue is with the constraints that are on us here in the United States where we can only get six cycles paid for and a medicine that's so expensive. Uh, should people consider taking a holiday after perhaps three treatments if they have a dramatically good response and saving additional Plavicto for future use down the line? No one knows the answer to that, but the situation might be clarified by getting a scan and finding out if, if indeed all visible cancer has disappeared after three injections, possibly taking a holiday and using further Plavicto later when the disease comes back. So for patients who are PSMA negative in this 10% of people that we typically see PSMA scans, you know, they don't have that you know, molecule and they're not able to use them, um, would that mean that Pluvicto is not really an option for them? That is correct. Patients who have a PSMA PET scan uh, that is not lighting up 
or if we know that there are additional lesions where only some of the lesions are lighting up, then it's possible that Plavicta uh, would be a suboptimal choice as it's not going to go to those lesions that don't light up on PSMA. There are other markers that are being developed where they're linking the radioactivity to different things that clip onto the surface of prostate cancer, like CEA, which is a, a marker often seen in colon cancer. There are scans to detect patients that have those markers, and several lines of research are pursuing pluvicto-type treatments that don't use PSMA but use another marker for those patients that have different types of prostate cancer. What about actinium? Does that mean actinium would also not be effective for patients who are in that 10% you know, range of PSMA not working? Yeah, actinium that's based on PSMA wouldn't be effective, but development of other surface markers is also being pursued with actinium just as it is with Plavicto. A couple of key things that in talking to other prostate cancer patients they've said have been helpful. So first of all, it is getting support. You know, if you can bring someone to your doctor's office with you, if they can help you write down your questions ahead of time. All of this is just really good to have when you're in those offices and so much information is being thrown at you. They can help advocate for you, get your medical records. So if you have somebody who would go with you to these appointments and listen on the phone for virtual appointments, whatever it may be, it's a really great thing to do because you want to make sure you're taking care of your emotional health and your mental health through this whole process. I think people don't even come close to understanding what prostate cancer patients go through. You know, you have the medical, you have the financial, you have insurance, you have travel, dealing with your job. There's just so many factors, and a lot of it can affect you both emotionally and mentally. And I think it's important that you just talk to somebody. You get vocal about what your concerns are. So a great way to talk to someone is through our helpline. These are prostate cancer patients who have been through treatment, and they have a whole wealth of information, and they can help build up your questions for your medical appointments. But I think it's important that you get support. So if you don't remember anything else from this little outro, please remember that you're important, that you deserve support. And if you have resources around you, maybe a friend or helpline, or maybe even just joining a support group or joining a prostate cancer forum like Health Unlocked, you can find out a lot of information from those types of atmospheres, whether it's asking whether a patient has, you know, taken Pluvicto and what their experiences were like, what side effects did they have, all of this in general really helps build up your knowledge and you can walk in confidently or a little more confident with your doctors knowing that you want your questions answered, you know what you want uh, answered, and it's just a great way to build up your information overall. You can reach out to our helpline at pcri.org forward slash helpline and I will link the support groups in the description below this video. Now please reach out and leave comments and questions if there are other things you would like us to cover in future videos and please remember most of all, you're not alone.